Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be possibly talking about the final resolution to the mystery of ALH 84001, the iconic meteorite found in Antarctica that back in mid 90s created a lot of buzz in the scientific community because of this right here, something that seems to resemble life. And because this was a Martian meteorite, this almost right away implied that the life on Mars might have been discovered after all, with Bill Clinton eventually announcing this on the national TV back in 1997. And at the same time, this was also the start of my interest in astrobiology as the field. As a matter of fact, it was only in the early 2000s that this term was officially coined and became used in scientific community, with the idea of astrobiology being the search for actual life outside of planet Earth. And back then I started working as a lab assistant for one of the professors investigating this rock and a few other meteorites, and I was absolutely fascinated with the idea of this potentially being life. But my professor back then did not think so. And for a pretty good reason, because within only a few years it was definitively determined that it was most likely just a chemical reaction, with the most recent study going into extreme detail determining the exact reactions that can produce something very similar. And just as a fun side note, I also didn't really end up pursuing the field, mostly because of, well, I just wasn't particularly good at this research stuff. As a matter of fact, I've actually enjoyed more working with telescopes and working with my hands in, for example, grinding rocks or refilling microscopes with liquid nitrogen while also spilling it on my feet and burning my toes than I did with this whole other stuff that involved a lot of thinking and a lot of writing. And so in the end, it just became a hobby and it basically became my interest for many, many years. Nevertheless, I never stopped being fascinated with this particular discovery and always wanted to find the closure about, so okay, what exactly happened to create this? What sort of a reaction can produce something that resembles life, resembles some kind of a tiny bacteria? And so this recent study might have potentially answered this question for me, while also obviously providing a little bit more information about what we should be aware of when we find this in future meteorites or other locations around the solar system. But in order to really understand the complexity of all of this and also just to get the idea what this particular meteorite represents to the scientific community, I wanted to actually start with a bit of a time trip, a bit of a history about how this was discovered. And it all starts with ANSMAT, Antarctic Search for Meteorites, which is a publicly funded program, part of the National Science Foundation, whose main purpose is to look for meteorites in various trans-Antarctic mountains. Here's actually one of the more beautiful pictures of the mountains right here, and this is basically the mountains in Antarctica. And the premise here is pretty simple, because Antarctica is relatively untouched, and because it's mostly covered in snow, it becomes relatively easy to see various non-snow objects present on the surface. And so, as you can see in this particular picture, right here we have another meteorite discovered by the scientists that basically resembles a black spot in a very, very large white field. And the way they search for this is by basically driving snowmobiles in Antarctica approximately 30 meters apart. And as they all drive across the snow, they essentially scan for meteorites by looking at the contrast between the ice and the rock itself. They usually do this for approximately 5 to 7 weeks at a time and then take a break, changing the shifts. Now, generally speaking, once the rock is located, it's documented, it's also GPS tracked or basically the locations are put into the database. It's then collected into a special Teflon bag, with all the discoveries then published in this newsletter you can find in the description. This is published twice a year, and you can actually see there are quite a lot of publications going many, many years back. And back in 1984, in this location right here known as the Allen Hills, they've discovered this other rock that you see right here. This was the first rock discovered in 1984, so it's known as ALH 84001 with a total mass of about 2 kilograms or about 4.3 pounds, and generally being a pretty large sample as well. And the initial tests using isotopes determined that this rock landed on the planet approximately 13,000 years ago, or basically that it was lying in the snow for about 13,000 years. But it was blasted away from Mars due to some sort of a collision about 17 million years ago, and so this rock spanned approximately 17 million years traveling across space. Also, at the same time, this is one of the oldest rocks discovered coming from Mars. It very likely formed about 4 billion years ago, with these formations here possibly appearing relatively soon afterwards. 
And because the original investigation suggested that the chemicals present here very likely were formed in the presence of liquid water, the presence of something that also resembled life made a lot of scientists excited early on. With the actual origin of the rock eventually determined to be the region known as Eos Chasma, the region that you see right here, one of the regions present in the large canyon known as Valles Marineris. And by the way, completely unrelated to this, the scientists have also identified quite a lot of water compounds present in this region as well. The video about this should be somewhere right there or in the description below. And even though all of these initial signs pointed at the possible discovery of life, with the study from 1996 making a pretty strong point, with I guess the main point being that this sort of resembles a modern terrestrial bacteria, eventually this particular study was rejected for several reasons. One of the main reasons is because some scientists were able to create this using normal chemical reactions. The other reason is that, well, this is actually really, really small. It's approximately 100 to maybe 200 nanometers across, and that's at least three times smaller than the smallest bacterium we have here on planet Earth. And so if this was ancient Martian life, it just looked very, very different and much, much smaller from what we had on planet Earth. And the size here would be very, very difficult to explain. Mostly because for a functioning bacteria that's able to reproduce, that's able to do everything, there's really sort of a, a minimal size limit. And this here is way below that. But the original paper also argued that this could be life because of the other discoveries as well. For example, there was also presence of what's known as magnetite. And in this case, magnetite was embedded in the carbonate rock. And when we find something like this on Earth, it generally means that this came from life. This magnetite was maybe created by some kind of a bacteria that's able to do so. But at the same time, back in 2001, different scientists, including the one that I used to work for, were officially able to reproduce these similar formations through a completely inorganic process without any bacteria whatsoever. And so once again, this suggested that everything in that meteorite could be produced without the presence of life. And at the same time, this is not even the only meteorite where scientists have previously suggested there could be signs of life. But the thing is, a lot of other rocks usually came from Mars when it already lost most of its water. And because of the absence of water in those samples or any signs of water, it didn't really produce as much interest. Nevertheless, in the last couple of decades, more and more studies decided to investigate this rock and wanted to actually find out a little bit more about it and in what conditions this particular rock was actually created. For example, a study from 2011 discovered that the carbonates inside of this meteorite were most likely created at the temperature of about 18 degrees Celsius or about 64 Fahrenheit, and they were also created in the presence of liquid water, carbon dioxide, and very likely in somewhat thick atmosphere. With all of this suggesting that back in the days, Mars might have actually resembled planet Earth after all. Then, a couple of years ago, in April of 2020, the scientists have also identified different types of organic molecules, including the ones containing nitrogen, which might have also been created around this time, and at least here on Earth, are definitely associated with the formation of various types of complex molecules, which eventually led to the formation of complex life. In other words, the presence of these molecules, along with the fact that Mars was Earth-like, essentially created the conditions where life, in theory, could evolve on Mars. It just there are no signs of this life in this particular meteorite. The actual evidence from the meteorite is very, very circumstantial. And now we finally have this new study from January of 2022. With this study definitively showing that a lot of the features discovered in this rock and discussed in this video could easily be recreated using non-biological abiotic processes with a lot of these processes actually producing organic molecules here on planet Earth, but none of them requiring actual life or actual bacteria. With the first reaction that they describe in detail known as serpentinization, or essentially the production of various types of textures in the rock that generally resemble snake skin. And in this case, this particular reaction usually happens when some sort of an igneous rock produced from, for example, a volcanic reaction that's also generally quite rich in iron and magnesium, starts to interact with circulating water. And as a result of this interaction of magnesium and iron and water, it then starts producing some hydrogen as well. All of this resulting in some of the patterns visible in the meteorite, and more importantly, some of the features that might have resembled life. And the second reaction that they describe in detail that might explain everything is the reaction known as carbonation. 
And in this case, this is usually when these rocks also interact with water that's slightly acidic from carbon dioxide dissolved in the water itself, which then produces some of the carbonates or some of the carbonated minerals that were found in the meteorite, with both processes very likely happening at different times. But the scientists in the paper also suggest that all of these processes only lasted for maybe 200 million years or so. Or in other words, after about 200 million years, approximately 3.9 billion years ago, Mars might have started to dry out and the water might have started disappearing and potentially stopping all of these reactions. Today, the scientists refer to this as the Noachian period. And it's when Mars could have looked something like this. And so, on this Mars, 3.9 to 4.1 billion years ago, as long as there was some salty water, or specifically what's known as brine, that contained a lot of carbon dioxide on the inside, and as long as it interacted with various igneous rocks, it would be enough to initiate these reactions that would then produce all of this stuff. Including, of course, this iconic shape that resembles a bacterium. But interestingly enough, these particular chemical reactions have not really been identified in many rocks coming from Mars, so this probably didn't last very long. However, various studies coming from various probes on Mars suggest that these particular reactions definitely happened in the past. And on our own planet, these reactions generally produce things like methane, they also produce all sorts of organic molecules, and create a lot of different diversity when it comes to minerals and different rocks. As a matter of fact, some of the unusual observations of methane coming from Mars today have been explained using these chemical reactions. In other words, these chemical reactions could still be producing something on Mars today, and we could still be detecting various elements because of these reactions that happen underneath. And so in the end, it's a pretty solid explanation and potentially represents the end of the story or the end of the saga of this somewhat famous meteorite. The meteorite that started a lot of careers ended up producing an entire field of astrobiology, but that also very likely served as a good reminder that we have to be really prudent and really careful when it comes to making these announcements in the future. And anyway, on that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. I'm sure we'll find more meteorites and more unusual discoveries from Mars in the future, so make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be covering them in some of the future videos as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the Mars-themed t-shirt that you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.